Welcome to the Common Man Football Show. My name is James Coburn, and today's episode, we're talking about the Baltimore Ravens 2018 NFL Draft Class based on analytics. So in this video, we're going to look at the Ravens Draft Class based on production and based on athleticism data to determine how likely the picks are in this draft to pan out long term um, for the Ravens. Uh, so we're going to go through every single pick. Uh, if you're new to this channel and new to the work that I do, all terms and definitions will be in the description. So starting with the first pick of the draft, we have Hayden Hurst, uh, tight end out of South Carolina. Uh, when it comes to his athleticism traits, he had a 42.27 explosive lower body strength score, 73.41 speed score, and 59.55 flexibility score. Doesn't quite have all pro slash pro ball athleticism traits because he doesn't hit the speed trait he needs to hit. 100% uh, of multiple all pro slash pro ball tight ends since 1999 had at least a 78.89 speed score. And he's a little bit off of that, but still pretty solid all around athleticism traits when you look at it. And when it comes to production data, 77.24 in terms of his uh, market share production score, which definitely is above the all pro threshold and the pro bowl threshold in terms of the bottom and threshold of the position. And when you look at the averages at the, at the position, He's kind of in between a Pro Bowl and starter player. Uh, there are some question marks with age when it comes to Hayden Hurst. Um, he's you know someone who's already 24 um, and, and a half in many ways in terms of his age. Uh, there have been no all pro slash Pro Bowl safeties, uh, tight ends, excuse me, when it comes to his overall age profile. But when I look at Hayden Hurst, I look at a guy that's very similar to Dennis Pitta. Uh, Dennis Pitta is a guy that, he was, Pitta was much more athletic and much more productive, but Similar age, um, strong, at least good production profile, good athleticism profile. And Pitta was a guy who was able to contribute and do some interesting things. So I think when it comes to Hayden Hurst, as much as people harp on his age, which is definitely a concern, especially when it comes to high quality upsides, very unlikely that he becomes an all-pro slash so pro bowl tight end. But when it comes to a long-term starter, he could have a very Dennis Pitta-like impact. Um, so we'll see what happens with him long term, but that's definitely kind of the overall upside potential when it comes to a guy like Hayden Hurst. Uh, then, of course, we get to Lamar Jackson, quarterback out of uh, Louisville. Uh, when you look at his uh, production data, uh, 28.71 was his highest high school production score. There's never been a long-term starting quarterback in the NFL since the 2007 NFL draft class to have less than a 69 high school production score. Uh, but he does have a good FBS production score. Highest uh, being 85.82 out of 100, which pretty much hits the Pro Bowl threshold when it comes to quarterbacks, which is the big dilemma when it comes to Lamar Jackson, is that he's someone that from the high school level was a project in many ways. Um, and when you look at his pr uh, career data, it shows you know uh, him as a project. He uh, His career FBS score was a 52.40 out of 100, which doesn't quite hit the bottom in all pro career threshold or bottom in Pro Bowl career threshold. Um, does hit at least above their starter threshold. When you look at the averages at the position, doesn't quite look like an all-pro player, pro bowl player, or starter player because of his career threshold. And again, a lot of this is because of how much of a project he was coming out of high school. The data mostly says Lamar Jackson has a very likelihood to become a bust, but I will say this much. He does have a similar profile to kind of like Tyrek Taylor. He does have some similar traits to Michael Vick in many ways. And even though Michael Vick wasn't the most efficient passer per se, he definitely was able to win football games and did lead his team to an NFC Championship game um, at one point, um, at least going to the playoffs. So as much as Lamar Jackson's data doesn't say a lot about him being able to maintain long-term consistent success, I do think that he has the athleticism traits. I do think that there is some upward mobility with him in terms of his overall traits that you could see a guy that kind of bucks the trend and becomes an outlier. So I am a little bit more optimistic about Michael, uh, not Michael Vick, excuse me, but Lamar Jackson, just because I think that even though he was very much a project coming out of high school and then slowly had to develop at the college level, I do think that there there is a chance that he could continue to develop at the NFL level and may not ever be an all-pro type quarterback like a Peyton Manning, Tom Brady type, but definitely has the potential to become a very interesting long-term starter, if you will. So if that makes any sense. So, and, and definitely as a quarterback that you could win a Super Bowl with um, if you put the right team around them. So that's the only thing I can really say about Lamar Jackson um, in terms of his overall profile. But he is going to need some time to develop. I mean, that's the basics with him. He is someone who you're going to have to develop. You're going to have to spend some time and, and, and really um, focus in on 
um, a lot of different things when it comes to him um, in terms of just um, accuracy and um, consistency with a lot of different things. Uh, then, of course, we get to the Orlando Brown offensive tackle uh, out of Oklahoma pick. Very unathletic, uh, 0.54 in terms of explosiveness, 2.58 in terms of speed, and uh, 9.414 uh, in terms of flexibility for his size. There's never been a long-term starting offensive tackle with his athleticism traits as low as this. Uh, his bench press didn't even hit the long-term starting threshold that it needed to hit in terms of 19 reps on the bench, uh, and that was at his pro day and combine. Um, so in many ways, Orlando Brown is just this guy that just does not look like a long-term starter based on his athleticism traits. Uh, we'll see what happens with him ultimately, um, but uh, again, just really, really poor athlete. Very unlikely to become a long-term starter since 1999. Then, of course, we get to Mark Andrews, tight end out of Oklahoma. Uh, when you look at his athleticism traits, 33.57 in terms of explosiveness, 82.50 in terms of speed, and 52.43 in terms of flexibility. Very similar to the issue that... Uh, that uh, that Hayden Hurst had, you know, where he has good athleticism traits, but he doesn't quite hit every single threshold he needs to hit, but still pretty good athleticism traits overall. Um, and when we look at his production data, pretty solid, 72.26 in terms of his uh, passing yardage market share production above the all-pro threshold of 70.27, and um, definitely closer to the starter average and Pro Bowl average, but still pretty solid all-around production. I think Mark Andrews has a very good shot to become a long-term starting um, receiving back uh, when it's all said and done. Then, of course, we get to Anthony Everett, cornerback out of Alabama. We get to his production data, 53.18 in terms of uh, solo tackle data and 71.22 in terms of pass deflection data. Um, the only big question mark here is, is uh, when it comes to his uh, solo tackle data being as low as it is. When you look at the averages in terms of the average all-pro player and average Pro Bowl player, their solo tackle is much uh, uh, market share is much higher than that. Um, pass deflection data is pretty solid. Um, but the biggest issue with Anthony Everett is just with athleticism testing. Um, 8.37 in terms of explosiveness for his size, 80.11 in terms of speed, and 41.71 in terms of flexibility for his size. There's never been a long-term starting quarterback to have as low of an explosive lower body strength score as Anthony Everett, and that's the only sort of major red flag when it comes to him. Um, he could end up becoming a long-term starter because of his production and because of his speed traits, uh, but he definitely is just someone that when you look at collectively, when you look at the data collectively, there's just a lot of red flags here. And of course, you get to Kenny Young, uh, linebacker out of UCLA. Uh, when you get to his production data, he had a 75.86 solo tackle score, uh, which doesn't quite hit the all-pro threshold or pro bowl threshold, but it's pretty close to the starter average score of 79.20. Uh, when you look at his athleticism testing, he had a 71.88 explosive lower body strength score, 83.73 speed score, and a 37.79 flexibility score. Doesn't look like an all-pro or pro bowl level athlete at the linebacker position, mainly because of his flexibility testing but does look like a long-term starter. So I think in many ways, Kenny Young has a good shot to become a long-term starting linebacker, uh, but just not someone that ends up becoming a multiple all-pro slash Pro Bowl player uh, in terms of high-quality upside. Then, of course, we get to Jaleel Scott, wide receiver out of New Mexico State. Uh, when you look at his production data, he had a 50.34 passing yards market share production score, which does not hit the five-time all-pro, three-time all-pro, three-time Pro Bowl, or long-term starter threshold of 58 or higher. Uh, when it comes to his overall data. So um, very unlikely to become a long-term starter based on his data. Um, when you look at his av the averages at the position, the average All-Pro score, average Pro Bowl score, and average starter score since 1969, um, Jill Scott, again, 50.34, well below what those averages are. And when you get to athleticism data, he does have some intriguing athleticism traits, 69.63 in terms of explosiveness, 55.18 in terms of speed, and 29.90 in terms of flexibility for his size. Definitely has one, actually two, uh, all process Pro Bowl athleticism traits in terms of his explosiveness, in terms of his speed. But when you look at his production data and you look at his athleticism traits, which are not really that impressive either, I think it's very unlikely that Jill Scott goes on to become a long-term starting wide receiver. Most likely a backup slash rotational guy at best in his career. And of course we get to Jordan Lastly, wide receiver out of UCLA. Uh, when you look at his production data, pretty impressive. 93.32 in terms of his uh, passing yards market share production, which pretty much hits all the thresholds that I mentioned that Jill Scott didn't hit. And when it comes to athletic, uh, the averages of the position, pretty impressive as well, above the all-pro average of 92.14. And now when we get to athleticism data, 38.91 in terms of explosiveness, 65.58 in terms of speed, and 40.10 in terms of flexibility for his size. Essentially has 
One, all pro slash pro bowl athleticism trait in terms of his speed. Doesn't have the best explosiveness, doesn't have the best flexibility, but I think in many ways when you're looking at Jordan Lastly, this is a guy that has the potential to be a Stefan Diggs like wide receiver prospect. Very similar profile to Stefan Diggs in terms of his production data and in terms of his athleticism traits. And I'm going to be very excited to see exactly what happens to him in this particular offense. Then, of course, we get to Deshaun Elliott, defensive safety out of Texas. Uh, when you look at his production data, he had a 73.42 solo tackle score, 96.29. Uh, interception score, 93.52 uh, uh, pa uh, pass deflection score. Um, doesn't quite have all pro potential production traits, but does have Pro Bowl potential production traits in terms of his solo tackle data, interception data, and pass deflection data. When you look at the averages of the position, he looks closer to a, a starter than he does a Pro Bowl or all pro player just because of his solo tackle data, but still pretty solid all around profile. His only issue is athleticism testing. 69.60 uh, in terms of explosiveness, 60.82 in terms of speed, and only 29.95 in terms of flexibility for his size. Doesn't quite have all pro potential or pro bowl potential in terms of his flexibility testing, but does have starter potential. I'm thinking many, in many ways, Elliot is most likely a long-term starting safety at the next level because of how good his production data is, but he is someone that is going to have some issues with balance in his, in his career because of uh, his lack of flexibility. And of course, we get to uh, Greg uh, Snat, offensive tackle out of Wagner. Uh, when you look at his athleticism traits, 28.42 in terms of explosiveness, 18.58 in terms of speed, and 65.96 in terms of flexibility for his size. Doesn't have all pro, pro Bowl potential because of his explosiveness and because of his speed traits, but does have starter potential. And when you look at the averages at the position, well below the averages in terms of all pro potential, Pro Bowl potential, and even starter potential. Uh, when you look at his explosiveness and his speed. So um, Sinat could become a long-term starter as like a fringe long-term starter, um, but definitely not a lot of athletic upside here. Not a lot of athletic upside to become a, um, a Pro Bowl player, an All-Pro player, uh, or, or but does have some upside to become a starter, but not high-end upside to become a long-term starter. So we'll see what happens with him, but definitely more likely that he becomes a backup than a long-term starter because of his overall profile. Then, of course, you get to Bradley Bozeman, offensive center out of Alabama. Um, very poor athleticism traits, 3.30 in terms of explosiveness, 7.54 in terms of speed, and 0.62 in terms of flexibility for his size. Doesn't hit all pro potential, pro bowl potential, or even starter potential in terms of his overall athleticism traits. When you look at the averages of the position, it looks a little worse. Uh, you know, the, the average all pro score, pro bowl score, and starter score doesn't really hit anywhere near those places. Um, ultimately, we'll see what happens with him, but he just doesn't look like a long-term starter. Most likely a backup slash rotational guy. And of course, we get to Zach Zeeler. Uh, in terms of his athleticism traits, uh, 37.92 in, in terms of explosiveness, 77.13 in terms of speed, and 79.92 in terms of flexibility for his size. Doesn't really have all-pro or pro bowl potential athleticism traits because of his explosive lower body strength score not being 66.96 or 51, but definitely has starter potential in terms of his traits. Um, this is another guy that does have pretty good production. His production was at lower level competition. So you have to kind of throw that data out a bit because you, you realistically you shouldn't compare FCS production to FBS production because of a lot of the different variables uh, involved in that. But I do think there's a chance that he, he could become a long-term starter and end up becoming one of those sort of lower level division guys that the Ravens usually put bets on and usually end up winning. So I think in many ways, Zeeler has a good chance to kind of pay off um, in terms of, uh, you know, betting on him. So overall, when you look at the Baltimore Ravens draft class, uh, it's solid. Uh, I don't think there's a lot of players that have high quality upside. The only player that really has pro bowl slash all pro potential pretty clearly is Jordan Lastly, uh, the wide receiver. Um, but every other player just looks at best a long-term starter and some of them even just have failing grades in terms of either athleticism testing or production data and, and, you know, to go on to become a successful player um, so i do think there are some players that are going to be successful i think deshaun elliott has a chance to be a long-term starter lastly has a chance to be to become a long-term starter or better kenny young definitely a long-term starter uh andrew mark andrews long-term starter potential definitely hayden hurst i think has a chance to be a long-term starter uh, and Lamar Jackson, I think, um, very unlikely based on data that he becomes a long-term starter because of what the overall data says, but I do have a little bit more hope in him becoming sort of an outlier because of his athleticism traits and because of just 
just this sense that it could work out. So we'll see what happens with him, of course. And that's probably going to be the most defining part of this draft class is if Lamar Jackson works out or not. Um, but uh, overall, not the best draft class ever. Um, a lot of players and a lot of them with kind of so-so profiles, uh, but definitely some players that could become successful. So let me know in the comment section below, how do you believe the Baltimore Ravens draft class will turn out? And of course, uh, my name is James Coburn. You can find my other work at draftcoburn.wordpress.com. You can also follow me on Twitter at Gemetrics. And if you like this content and you want more content like this, be sure to leave a like and subscribe. Uh, share this video as well with anybody that you know. Hit that notification button so that you're always reminded when another video of mine drops. And I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Peace.